and welcome back. Today we will do lecture 7-3 on discrete time systems inverse Z transforms. The objectives are that students should be able to go from the Z domain to this discrete time domain by using Z transforms. Students should be able to find the Z transform of a given system transfer function. And students should be able to use partial fraction expansion and long division to find the Z transform of a given system. There are two methods for finding the inverse Z transform, including partial fraction expansion and the power series method. Since the Z transform comes from a sampled waveform, the inverse Z transform yields only the values of the time function at the sampled instance. In class activity one, use the power series method or long division to find the inverse Z transform for the system described by the following transfer function. F of Z is equal to 4Z divided by Z squared minus Z plus 0.5. So I'm going to do long division. So here I'm going to have 4z divided by z squared minus z plus 0 0.5. So first I'm going to multiply by 4z to the negative 1, which yields 4z minus 4 plus 2z to the negative 1. Then I'm going to subtract and have 4 minus 2z to the negative one. Next term is going to be 4z to the negative two. And when I multiply, that yields four minus 4z to the negative one plus 2z to the negative two. And I subtract again. And I get 2z to the negative one minus 2z to the negative two. And we'll do one more step. So I'm going to have plus 2z to the negative 3. And when I multiply, I get 2z to the negative 1 minus 2z to the negative 2 plus z to the negative 3. And I subtract and get negative z to the negative 3 and so on. So I know for negative z to the negative 3, the next term would be negative z to the negative 5 and we're going to stop there and find the first four terms. So I can rewrite this as f of z is equal to 4z to the negative 1 plus 4z to the negative 2 plus 2z to the negative 3 plus z to the negative 5. And this would go on forever. So I'd put plus dot, dot, dot. In the n domain, f of n, the inverse Z transform would be four delta of N minus one plus four delta of N minus two plus two delta of N minus three plus delta of N minus five and so on. So from here we see that F of zero is equal to zero f of 1 is equal to 4, f of 2 is equal to 4, f of 3 is equal to 2, f of 4 is equal to 0, and finally f of 5 is equal to 1. In class activity 2, Use the power series method and the partial fraction expansion method to find the inverse Z transform for the system described by the following transfer function. So first, once again, we'll do the long division method. So I'm going to have negative 2Z squared plus 2Z divided by Z squared plus 4Z plus 3. So our first term is going to be negative 2. So I have negative 2z squared minus 8z minus 6. And then when I subtract, I'm going to have 10z plus 6. So my next term is going to be plus 10z to the negative 1. And when I multiply, I get 10z plus 40 plus 30z to the negative one. And then for a third term, I'll have, when I subtract, negative 34 minus 30 z to the negative one. So here I'm going to have negative 34 
z to the negative 2. So this is negative 34 minus 136 z to the negative 1. And when I subtract, I get 106 z to the negative 1. So now f of z would be equal to negative 2 plus 10 z to the negative 1 minus 34 z to the negative 2 and so on. So f of n is equal to negative 2 delta of n plus 10 delta of n minus 1 minus 34 delta of n minus 2 plus dot 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 or f of 0 is equal to negative 2 f of 1 is equal to 10 and f of 2 is equal to negative 34. So now let's try the partial fraction expansion method. f of z equal to negative 2z squared plus 2z over z squared plus 4z plus 3 can be written as negative 2z squared plus 2z over z plus 3 times z plus 1. So the first thing we're going to do is divide the left and right side by z. So we're going to have f of z is equal to negative 2z plus 2 over z plus 3 times z plus 1. And then for the partial fraction expansion, we'll have a over z plus 3 plus b over z plus 1. So students would typically ask me, why do I have to divide by z? Well, if you look at your inverse z transform table, all of the terms have a z in the numerator. And since we need to get it in that form to take the inverse z transform, you have to introduce either a z somewhere back into the final form or you're going to have a delay. So this is the way we'll do this one, but eventually I will show you the other way as well. So now we'll find a. a is equal to negative 2z plus 2 over z plus 1 evaluated at z equal negative 3, which equals negative 4. b is equal to negative 2z plus 2 over z plus 3 evaluated at z equal negative 1, which equals positive 2. So f of z over z is negative 4 over z plus 3 plus 2 over z plus 1, or f of z is equal to negative 4z over z plus 3 plus 2z over z plus 1. And then by going to the table and looking up the inverse z transform, we get that f of n is equal to negative 4 times negative 3 to the n plus 2 times negative 1 to the n, that entire quantity multiplied by u of n. So now let's confirm that this is actually equivalent to the answer we got before. f of 0 is equal to negative 4 plus 2, which equals negative 2. So check, that's the same as what we got before. f of 1 is equal to 12 minus 2, which is 10, which is what we got before. And f of 2 is equal to negative 36 plus 2, which equals negative 34, which is also the same as what we got before. So here we've shown the answer in the compact form, and we've also shown the answer by deriving each of those terms one at a time by using the power series expansion along the division.